Right, guys, we're up to number five. In the middle of editing that, I just got a message from the Shogunate that said he's catching up. He's on number one at the minute. So don't forget to follow the Shogunate and don't forget to follow Japan at War. He's doing one as well. These are to support this. If you love the Samurai, Book of Samurai 1, Book of Samurai 2, you can buy them in any order. It doesn't matter. They are uh, all one series of Warfare Scrolls. And we are just on the Imjin War. Now, uh... I've sh let me show you a picture. So basically, that's the background of Korea. And if you look very closely, it's got the tatami mats and the same candlesticks and the same building with a different colour um, cloth as uh, the other main palaces that have gone. You can't have a go at the guys for this. It's just a budget thing. But, you know, that's just budget. But it is a bit funny that it's like, this is Korea, but throw some Korean soldiers in. They've done the same filming on the same day. Can't blame them for it, but... You sort of see where the budget lies, I think. I think at this point. But again, that's that's great. That's the budget they've got. They've made it. We're getting educated about Japan. I like it. Now, he's gone to the Korean War. Now, I agree with the historians on here is that he did that because you've got a lot of samurai doing nothing. It's literally, what should we do next? All these samurai, let's do something. And I totally think that. And a lot of people put it down to him being a bit of a Napoleon and, as I say, megalomaniac. If you've just took over a country from nothing, you're a megalomaniac. And to be honest, you just basically... I just don't like these words they use for it. Like, when we have Alexander the Great, he's the Great, wow, Alexander the Great took over. But when you say he oh, he's a bit crazy. We don't say Alexander the Great was crazy. We go, he was looks like 30-odd-year-old. He went, right, taking over the world. All right. Gets there, he's like, starts getting ill, says, oh, I nearly did it. Let's go home then. You know what I mean? And he literally took over the known world. When Hideyoshi does it, they're like, oh, I think he was crazy. No, I think he was just a medieval warrior who was like, I've got an army of so many strong, let's massacre Korea. Let's have fun, boys. Take their heads. So I don't think it's as um, like that, to be honest. But I do agree, probably he's got a lot of samurai and he's like, well, what's next? We're going to stop for a picnic. Let's crack on. Just one of those guys who's like, let's just keep going. Um, so, but the, here they have a, um, a messenger, um, I forget his name off the top of my head, but it's just come up, I know him, and, uh, he's a right bastard, and the, the way this scene is, it should have been played differently, the actual history is, is this guy, he's, um, he gets this bowl of expensive food and just throws it on the floor, and uh, all the, uh, the Koreans are trapped picking it up, and he's like, there you go, you're just not prepared people, you care, to, you're not warriors, we'd have just left that, we've just spent money, we're rich, we're just... We'll do it. You're all, and he's like, "Look at these grey hair scars. Look at these gnarled hands." Because I've been at war, and he's just literally talking to the Greens, like, "You're knobs," and he starts lying, making stuff up. I don't know if they go into that, but they don't really. He's just lit, and he, for some reason, he's turned up in half armor. Like I, the, one of the documentaries I did, we had to dress someone in half armor, but he's literally a court, a court, the Korean court. He should be in court dress or whatever dress. You know what I mean? They they are appearing. In. He's he's got retinue with him. He's got grooms with him he's got everything and he's just there in like randomly took his breastplate off which i don't think is correct um so anyway let's crack on okay we've got people wearing top knots under helmets now um there's this sort of myth that the top knot goes out of there and all that that's not now actually i'd love to do more on the um i'd love to do more on the hairstyles of japan but as far as i'm aware and please if i am wrong correct me in the comments but as far as i am aware samurai wear their hair down under their helmets and they actually have caps over it and their helmet goes on top and this padded cat and it's all there and it's all done they don't have the top knots up and they don't go out through the you know the hole and all that malarkey um but here they just randomly got all their top knots on and just putting their helmets on uh, as far as i'm aware their helmets their hair is down when in armor and if you're off in camp you just put your tenagui on that's why they have tenagui around to so just keep the hair back and when you're like formally dressed you you oil your hair and put it up in a top knot and it all comes over i am I, I, again i could be wrong guys but as far as i'm aware from the research i've done you don't wear a top knot under samurai helmets but if anybody knows more than i do on this one please put it down below right we're at the uh korean war bit now the korean war i find if if reincarnation exists i think i was in the korean war on the japanese side i don't know basically it's it's underplayed here. Maybe for time, I don't know. But the Koreans were not military, massively military able at the time. They had, you know, their own problems there and maybe at times of peace. Basically, they needed China to help them out. But the way that the Japanese hammered Korea was awesome. They literally hammered it. And they got all the way to the top. But what is missing here is the arguments that went on with different people. There was 
um, East and West version armies going up. Even the Japanese were angry with each other. And like even it's said that uh, one Japanese commander was actually telling the Koreans where the other Japanese commander was so he could get killed, so he could take the victory. There was loads of problems. I've actually got an amazing book, which is uh, an eyewitness account of, from the 1500s from the Korean side on the Japanese war, and it just sounds awesome. They were like literally like, Jesus Christ, run. And they said just these mass demonic men were coming over the hill and like they were coming in three columns and everything, which is Sangun in um, Japanese, basically three divisions. and. It's just the, the 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 Japanese are using spies, everyone, for those who ask about Korean ninjas. I'm talking to you, chosen ninja. So the Japanese are using spies in Korea. The Koreans are using spies. And what it does, I'm not, obviously it was a failed campaign, but I think the first half of it was awesome. But then, of course, the Chinese get involved and the people start getting, it starts getting pushed back. But it almost sounds like this, like the Koreans won against the Japanese. No, they didn't. And at the end, the last couple of seconds, then the Chinese helped them. No the Koreans got battered and then the Chinese really did have to help them and even with Admiral Yi who's like a mint admiral from the Korean side and he was sorting everything out they still you know it was basically an overstretch if it was me I'd have gone in bit by bit clunk 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 make your way up there solid uh, consolidate things but T Toyotomi Hideyoshi was just like as they say by this point a bit nuts like um as we say I don't really agree with the megalomaniac thing, but there is the just keep going, keep going. But he's, I do know from my research that the reports were, he was being lied to and things were being said. So it, you can't really blame someone for saying push forward if you've got the wrong information. So we just don't know. But the Korean War seems to have come to an end now and it's talking about Hideyoshi's um, people. Again, sorry guys, these are getting shorter and shorter because it's the same thing, it's the same thing now. Just, it's I don't do story, I do the what they actually do. And now they've stopped actually doing stuff or we've been through it before. So so let's carry on and see where we get to. Right, there's a scene here where Hideyoshi uh, kills, I think, one of his concubines. I don't know how true this is. Uh, I don't, as I say, I don't uh, follow his history that close. But what I'm happy with in these documentaries is they show the two things about women. W one, they're actually really powerful. Some of the women are extremely powerful. This idea of the... So a lady called Holly asked me the other day, and I'm sure she's watching this now, about uh, women in Japan. And they, I hope this documentary shows you, Holly, that there's some seriously powerful women. But on the other hand, it also shows that some are brutally murdered, literally, for dancing. One woman, a pregnant woman, has a baby ripped out of her so they can uh, get the feces... Um, the feces... The... Um, fetus to uh, do magic with uh, people are just uh, people have their noses cut off their mouths cut open for gossiping the samurai were brutal as hell and I like the fact that they've put this this image in here I'd like to point something out here and I don't know how true it is to life but it is so Hideyoshi they say has got over a hundred concubines and he can't get a son okay and with a hundred concubines he can't, he's got, had a daughter apparently and he's had a son but 100 women not getting pregnant and then the sons are not coming and nobody's, you know, doesn't it sort of like scream somebody's seeing these women on the side to make sure he has a son? Do you know what I mean? 100 concubines, even if that's an over-exaggeration and he has 20 concubines, 30 concubines, he's got and he's nailing them left, right and centre. He's going to have like sons galore and children galore and he's not got them. So it seems to me that somebody was doing the job for him, to be honest. So these probably are not. And again, it talks about his uh, nephew successor who's brutally horrible, kills peasants, kills women for no reason. And we have to remember that about the samurai. So I quite like that. And I'll do that. I'm going to do a review at the end of all these videos. So I'll probably mention that. So a question for the audience. They've just said that um, he kills his nephew. And then he rounds up like the women and the people and kills the, anyone connected. And here it has them hanging. And you hear the neck break. First of all, in Europe, the, the neck break hanging wasn't around in the 1500s. It was strangulation hanging, wasn't it? Like off a tree sort of job. And B, I don't recall hanging in Japan. Crucifixion, yes. Burning, yes. Saw cutting, yes. Decapitation, yes. Being wrapped in mats, yes. Drowned, yes don't remember hanging does anybody know anything about whether people were hanged in japan and they put the stereotypical <coughs> in there but no she's not dropped from a height she's literally you know hung up so i think that's a bit not right we've established that the uh, budget was a bit low but there's a guy here carrying a scroll 
uh, a messenger scroll and they've actually got a hanging scroll where the thing the triangle is at the top and instead of turning it around and hiding it they've literally focused on it and he's walking with the scroll but it's a hanging scroll you can tell by the the way that the ribbon is and uh, ribbons from scroll scrolls go this way hanging scroll ribbons go this way and so he's literally carrying a hanging scroll and i'm like you could have turned that over you know i know they want to show he's got a scroll in his hand but it's a messenger scroll but it's totally not correct most messages this is what i say so you get envelopes in japan folded messages you get scroll den show that come out like that and you get hanging scrolls for like thingy and they're sort of mixing them all up in the messages they've just gone to the sort of the prop department and gone this scroll you know what i mean this scroll this paper so they're just mixing it all up it doesn't really make sense i mean like and that's not a budget thing they've got them in their hands so get it right Right, we've come to the end of that one, guys. Not much went on there. They, they've, like, basically, um, Hideyoshi dies. Again, the funeral doesn't look right to me. Um, and, of course, they sort of, um, you know, explain. Again, these, uh, there's, like, eight or nine historians in there. And between them, I think they've got... Obviously, they've cracked it. We're looking forward to... Um, the Shogunate, uh, he'll know more about that than I will. And Japan at war, so he, they might have more to say about that. But from my basic understanding, that's sort of going on. But, uh, of course, the Shogunate is pretty much, he's the guy who really, really has got his head into the uh, Sengoku period. So he'll know more. Um, so we'll look forward to his. Um, and we're on the next one now. The last one. There's not really much to say, to be honest, because we've got to the sort of point where... Um, I was going to like talk about many different things, this battle, like, like, this technique, that's it, but it's just, they've not given me opportunity to, it's just, you know, a flash of armour, but I'll discuss that in the review at the end, so I'll do a seventh video review, so uh, I'll get a cup of tea, and then uh, we'll go on for the sixth one.